Uh, my name is Marty Ma. I'm a product director of product management at the HP Aruba Networking. Right, I'm mainly focused on the CX switching strategy and any innovation moving forward. Right, so today I'd like to actually share with you guys one of the topic which is uh, very popular these days since probably 12 months ago. Right, if you search on the internet talking about virtualization strategy, a lot of end customers are actually looking into how do they actually migrate from where they are to basically better protect them for the future. So today we're actually gonna introduce some new product as part of our product portfolio, as well as a recent integration that announced that really piece all the offering together from HP across the board. So before I dive into what I'm gonna share in detail, let me actually quickly walk you through a history of what the HP Aruba is offering around the CX portfolio. So we started the whole CX switching portfolio since the late uh, 2016. And since then, nine plus years later, we actually have a full breadth of uh, switching portfolio ranging from down to one gig to all the way up to 400 gig all sitting on a common platform software feature set and then manage uh, together with the common platform that, that was just introduced, the central platform. So these whole family of switches can basically help the customer in the enterprise pri uh, environment, basically from campus, branch, remote, ranging from access aggregation to core. At the same time, we also have a data center focused portfolio from the CX8000 above basically to provide very high density of 10 gig ranging all the way up to 400 gig portfolio and all managed by the central platform that we just talked about. And fast forward a little bit, in the late uh, 2021, we actually announced the first smart switch in the industry. Basically, I assume most of you are familiar with the DPU uh, used on the server NIC car, right? We started with the idea of working with AMD Pensendo to really putting the DPU together with the switching together to build the first smart switch on the market and really intended to basically solve a major problem that we have seen in the past in the networking industry, which is by putting the service closest to where the workload is, right, which is the top of rack. And just last month, we actually introduced the second flavor of this whole smart switch portfolio, which is basically a CX10,040, right? So now this one is basically focused more on the advanced server connectivity, 100 gig moving forward. And all these platforms share the common uh, platform capability that I just mentioned about. Any common switch capability you see in the past, it's all available there, and now we can have availability from 25 gig all the way up to 400 gig, up to a terabit, and then all the both product family is basically DPU enhanced, so we will be able to offer stateful layer four service across the board. And these are the current use case that we actually are shipping with the customer up to that 1.6 terabit stateful east-west firewalling inspection, macro micro segmentation, being able to basically to be a different location in the network. And really one unique capability is the high resolution of telemetry this platform can offer up to, we can actually manage it to a couple million uh, flow at the same time using NetFlow. All right, and then switching the gear a little bit, which is kind of where I want to talk about on this part, it's really HP announced the GreenLake to basically encompass all the product offering we, that we have across the board, ranging from the platform all the way to the different solution. And then HP Private Cloud Solution, which was announced last year, really putting these together to allow customer a kind of a migration path, not only available, say, for to do things in public cloud, they can actually having their private data center in a private cloud setting manage my HP in GreenLake. And then all the existing HP solution offering product can also be landing on top of the GreenLake or private cloud environment through the GreenLake of Flex. And then we, last year, we announced a joint adventure uh, with the uh, NVIDIA. The AI capability and an environment now can be consumed as part of HP GreenLake as well through the HP uh, private AI. And all these are orchestrated through the HP Morpheus software. 
And then in addition to that, we also just announced the Morpheus VM Essential, which is think about it, it's really a kind of a next generation way of how you manage your VM environment, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more in the next slide. It can basically be consumed either as a standalone software or on top of the uh, private cloud solution offering. So what we were offering with the Morpheus VM Essential is really an environment which help you unify your virtualized environment, right? So you can now actually having the existing VMware ESXi cluster on top of it, if you want to actually having new VM, you can actually try to put it into the hypervisor environment offered by Morpheus VM Essential. And all these environment, it's orchestrated and managed through a common single pane of a glass called HVM Manager. So then that way, no matter which hypervisor the end customer decide to go down to, this offer a customer, number one, a unified way to integrate different hypervisor environment, and at the same time, reduce the cost, which is at the beginning I talked about. A lot of customer today is thinking about what is my next strategy when I'm moving from a current increased price license model into a more kind of affordable model. That's, and that's actually where this uh, VM Essential solution is coming down to. So in addition to the platform itself through Morpheus, I mean, really earlier we also, James also talked about, OpsRamp give us cross the HPE portfolio visibility observability through the OpsRamp, right? Through the OpsRamp and then through Morpheus, along with the full blown of a product solution that offered by HPE, in general, this offer us a unique opportunity to truly become the only IT vendor in it, be able to support, to provide a full hybrid cloud st stack. So being in a private hyper, uh, hypervisor environment with VMware, Nutanix, Red Hat, or if the customer choose to go with things like uh, Microsoft, AWS, Azure, all these environments can be unified through a common set of a management orchestration platform through the Morpheus as a platform, OpsRamp as a visibility that can tap into all these environments, collect the telemetry, and then where we can see the previous talked about the agentic AI and different aspects can be all aggregated together. So the next question you're gonna ask is how does it relate it to the CX switching portfolio that you mentioned at the very beginning or where I represent, right? So as part of these offering, the, uh, you, the user do really have two different options. Technically, they can basically integrate the CX switching portfolio, the smart switching, basically the switching with the DPU equipped on top of it. There is a plugin basically help you integrate this into the environment. So user can basically choose to go lower on the networking stack on the hypervisor uh, uh, vendor offering and from there, still continue to have all the macro, micro segmentation and service they are enjoying today on a different pl uh, hypervisor platform with a much lower cost entry point. And also alternatively or strategically, they can choose basically to start trying out an alternative or hypervisor side by side. So we are able to basically offer you the capability to basically having a KVM-based environment managed jointly through the VM Essential, which is part of VM Essential offering. Then from there, the user can basically co-manage both the VMware environment as well as the uh, ESX, the, uh, uh, the uh, VM Essential environment together under a single pane of glass. Okay, so here's kind of a, a more technical view looking into how these uh, structure actually work and then where the CX smart switching portfolio coming into place to help you solve the problem. Traditionally on the virtualized environment, I'm, this is dated probably 10, 15 years ago, right? There's networking requirement within the host and then the vendor came up with a virtualized or soft switch kind of a solution to really solve the problem by providing the connectivity in between. And then in order to offer the more advanced zero trust or kind of a, a isolation, the isolated poor group or PVLAN was basically commonly used to offer this kind of a solution within the box. And then this basically allowed the VM traffic even within the same host, as long as they're separated, separated at the next level going down to the first hop switch, we will be able to start doing micro segmentation at the first hop. 
Now with the HVM, we offer both model, right? With the OVS built into the KVM, you can, we can provide a basic layer two functionality, but then with the plugin actually loaded, we're leveraging native uh, Linux uh, VM uh, driver basically to provide you Mac VLAN or Mac VTAP to allow you also similar isolation from a KVM based hypervisor and directly connect to a DPU equipped uh, uh, switch where you can actually leverage in the service policy to enforce your macro and micro segmentation. And even if you have a bare metal, now you don't actually really have to run a, another software instance, which is commonly a problem today. When you try to normalize the virtual networking across different hypervisor, if you wanted that to work with a physical world, there need to be a kind of a, a, a networking node or gateway, which you actually do that. So now with a smart switch in the place, Basically, we on the northbound, we using the HVM manager to orchestrate all these things together, the VM landing and everything. And on southbound, they also interact with the Aruba Fabric Composer, where basically we can orchestrate a switch for the corresponding network construct required. At the same time, also the networking policy required for the micro segmentation. Question, Marty. Sure. From a customer perspective, do you see that they prefer having the DPU on the NIC on the server itself? Mm -hmm or in the smart switch, right? This is, this is the Monterey Canary Row extension, right? That, right? right. That's the project that you had back sure. what, four years ago? 20, yeah, 21, right. right? Yeah. So very good question, right? So the DPU actually started as something to be consumed on a NIC in the very early time, yep. right? At that time, most customer, I mean, the challenge in there would be cost-wise, number one, it's prohibitive for them to actually buy a NIC, which costs you almost yep. doubling the price as your server, just for these functionality. So that become quickly something they're not willing to consume. Secondly, it's like uh, at that time, most for server, typically if you want to introduce any new technology, it has to kind of be somewhat greenfield, right? Nobody's going to go back to retrofit, basically pull out their NICA just for this purpose. So then that's the exact reason in the end of 2021, through working with MD Pensando, we found out, okay, that's actually a better way to do it by putting on top of switch. Right, again, certain things you probably won't be able to do it. For example, like storage related, thing. if you try to accelerate with DPU, you won't be able to do that. But then in terms of networking service, it really put us in a very good position. And the recent announcement by another vendor actually on a similar architecture kind of proven, this is a valid point, and then this is actually a ongoing trend for customer want to adopting that. And then we're just kind of proving us making a decision four or five years ago, that's truly the right way to drive this forward. So yeah, I know that the announcement that came recently, so it's sort of four years after. Mm -hmm. right? What's changed from a customer perspective to now, I mean, this was introduced, this was a little early, right? right. Monterey, Canary Row was pretty mm -hmm. cool back then, but the uptake was, I would say, a little muted, right? In, right. In, but what's changed now that I think what's changing is a couple of different things, right? The speed of a network really, I mean, help with the help of AI. The server speed actually started increasing dramatically. In the past, kind of you look at the whole industry, every time the networking speed especially need to be driven from a workload, work node perspective from server, usually it's lagging a few years behind. Mm -hmm. Right? And now you're actually with the AI introduction, you're actually seeing the industry asking for more. Right, we're looking at 800 gig and then Broadcom just announced 1.6 for Tomahawk 6. These trends basically speed up a lot of these adoption cycle and making the conversation of where you're putting DPU into it and become much more relevant to begin with. Right, even the dominating AI vendor is actually doing DPU on their AI server as well. But where does your, where does the HVM manager live? Is that something in, in central? Okay, HVM manager, think about this similar to the uh, kind of a, the alternative you look at a vCenter and other things. It okay. could be a standalone as an OVA, as a VM, or you can live in the cloud if you want to do a kind of a more cloud management model. In both models, this can actually work. And, and is it something that, it, I mean, it's configurable, or it, is it something that's just making sure it's standard across the board? It's configurable, and then it's basically uh, something you instantiate and you can customize for your environment. Okay, and so w would it be in, in Central that you would do that? It will have the integration so with the AFC down the road Central, and that's the model. You kind of keep it, the idea is basically keep a domain-specific thing. 
The HVM manager is mainly focusing on managing the whole VM environment. Got it. Last one. Um, is there any relation here to like your, your colorless ports? Any, any similarities from, uh, I know it's virtual versus physical, but mm -hmm. you've mentioned microseg a couple of right. times, and I'm curious if there's any, any similarities there. Is that? It's basically based on the workload. You can think of it as a server workload if you assign, for example, on the virtualized world, you have the VM tag, right? Mm -hmm. That's more like the color on the client side. Yeah, yeah. So the policy can be enforced based on that, and that's supported today. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So finally, this is my last slide by putting everything together, right? So what we're really introducing is basically, okay, if we only talk about a new platform in the networking today, right? A new switch is that it's not really that interesting. You really need to help solve customers solving a end-to-end -end problem. With a lot of customers being concerned about the current prevailing hypervisor increasing their subscription model, a lot of customer has been thinking and a lot of vendor has been talking about this, right? HP really is in a very unique situation because we offer compute storage networking together. And also we have been well known for putting solution together on top of all the platform we're selling and into an integrated end-to-end -end view, right? So through the combination of the Morpheus VM Essential plus the, uh, the CX10,000 product family, we are really creating a unique position that we want to share with you that, okay, now, you're not looking only at the software-specific solution for virtual networking. It's a holistic view looking at end-to-end -end where the problem space is, and then really try to solve it. And to simplify the process, the only thing users need to do is really by inserting a simple software plugin onto the HVM manager. The HVM manager now start talking with the, uh, the switches side, basically help you programming, orchestrate all the VLAN together. And then if the user prefer to manage everything from the hypervisor manager perspective, this gives you that model. So the typically at the customer side, you have kind of the server hypervisor administration that actually operate from their side, right? So every visibility is basically presented to the HVM manager. So then that way you can manage, orchestrate together either a VMware environment, HVM uh, environment today. And then on the policy side later down the road, we're gonna enhance the networking platform basically to show that part as well.